Hey, we're back at it again. If you can tell by what I am holding in my photorealistic hand, I implemented items in inventory. I originally finished the inventory and item system a while back, and I originally planned to upload a video on it during the weekend, but I was a bit busy with certain things. Huh. Bye. Anyways, here's how it works. For the items, I created a script that contains all the data for the blocks, like their image in the inventory, their different properties like break speed and appropriate tool, and their inventory item properties that determine whether or not it should be classified as a tool or a block. To make the items display on the player's hand, I was tired of working with meshes, so I instead created a bunch of sprite renders and organized them into the layout of a cube. For the different tools, I modeled each tool in Blender and created textures for each tool level from wood to diamond. The way I would switch between items in the hand is have the code disable and enable the renders depending on what the player is holding. For item drops, I did the same method for the way I display an item in the player's hand, except I gave it physics. Ah! If the player goes close enough to the item, they would pick it up. The way the code picks up the items is then handled by the inventory system. The inventory system is quite the daunting task, but complex things can be compared to simpler things to make it easier to understand. For example, I made an analogy which is just sorting toys into separate baskets. This analogy is meant to help me understand the pickup system. The way I see it is, you are given a pile of random colored toys and you have to sort them by color. The baskets are not defined of what color goes in it, so you progressively determine what goes into where. You take the first toy and put it into the first basket. Then you take the second toy and notice it is not the same color as the first toy, so you put it into the second basket. Now that the colors are determined in each basket, you just sort the rest of the toys into the basket until the baskets are full. If they are full, you stop sorting. In this Minecraft clone context, the random colored toys are the different items and blocks available in the game, and the baskets are item stacks which traditionally cap at 64. Now, after coding the pickup system with this analogy in mind, here's what it looks like. As you can see, it follows the analogy. The code is sorting the items I pick up into different inventory cells. If a cell is full, it will look for a cell that is empty and keep adding the items. The code first runs in the hotbar, then runs in the player inventory. Now the pickup system was in place, I wanted to move items in my inventory around. Looking back at the analogy, this is pretty simple as we can just swap baskets of toys around in different positions. When combining baskets of toys together, we can just put as many toys from one basket into the other until it is full. If it is full, we just keep the remaining toys in the original basket. We also have to make sure the toys from the first basket are the same as the other basket. We can also distribute a single type of toy among multiple baskets by checking if the basket we are trying to access has a different type of toy. If the types are the same, then just put one in the basket. After implementing this into the code, you can now edit the inventory to your liking. Ah, that is all for now. If you watched the last video in the series and saw the outro, my next goal is to recreate the crafting and smelting, and according to YouTube statistics, only a small percentage of you are subscribed to my channel. If you want to get notified of another progress video for this, consider subscribing. Also, Bacon and I told Star Wars Boy to build a whole netherite beacon, and he refuses to do so unless he gets 10k. So subscribe to Star Wars Boy so he will be forced to make a netherite beacon. Anyways, thanks for watching.